Hi everyone, my name is Stefan Foser and I'm the product manager of Scandix at Balzano. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview about Scandix, its intended use. I'm going to walk you through the report and show you the added value of Scandix. So let's start with the intended use. Scandix is a software as a medical device designed to assist radiologists in detecting and diagnosing the presence or absence of specific musculoskeletal pathologies during the review of lumbar spinal MRI scans in symptomatic patients. On the right side, you see the pathologies that are covered by Scandix. It's the spinal disc degeneration and herniation, the spinal canal stenosis, virtual fractures, modic changes, and foraminal stenosis. Scandix is a service running in the background as a DICOM node, and uh, with this it can easily attach to every PAX. It's fully automated and doesn't require any interaction. So as you can see here on the left side, once an MRI scan, a lumbar spine MRI scan is sent to Scandix, it automatically does the analysis. It does uh, do pre-processing and a lot of neural networks do the analysis. And at the end, a PDF is automatically generated and sent back to the PAX. I'm going to walk you through this PDF in a separate document. Let me quickly switch that. As you can see here, this is a PDF report with uh, some patient information at the very top, and then followed by the first results of the lumbar spinal segment analysis. On the left side, you see a sagittal T2 image that has the vertebral bodies automatically segmented and labeled such that you can easily uh, map the results to the respective vertebral body. On the right side, you see the results of the disc herniation classification as well as the spinal canal stenosis results. So these are just classification results showing that the pathology is present or absent, and more detail will be on the further pages. On the second page, we have insights about the neurophenomenal stenosis. So here we see in this table from all the segments left and right the neuroforamina. It's always selected the best slice that shows the neuroforamina with the, the highest degree of stenosis. And uh, on the left image you see the, the best slice, on the right image you see the same slice but with an overlay so the neuroforamina area segmented as well as the nerve root and then some arrows indicating where the nerve root touches the surrounding uh, bone structure or the uh, intervertebral disc or ligamentum flava structure. And based on these arrows, the lead rating is determined. As you can see here, it's highlighted once it's uh, above lead rating D. On the third page, we have monic changes. Uh, there we analyze the sagittal T1 and T2 central slices and essentially detect right and dark clusters. And based on the definition of modic change type 1, 2, or 3, the, uh, the depending uh, combinations basically result in that modic type. And these are listed on the right side in that table where the type is indicated as well as the area. And on the left side in the image, the uh, dark and bright clusters are highlighted. Next pathology covered is the vertebral body measurement and traces for the fracture assessment. So here are the anterior and posterior uh, platite are uh, determined and pointed out in that table. So here we have from L1 until L5 all heights, as well as the ratio between anterior and posterior height. In addition, we do have the angle, that is uh, the ratio between anterior and posterior height, as well as the uh, superior and inferior um, uh, height, that is uh, where the, the plate is being um, indentated. And with these results, the radiologist can determine, based on the, the genetic approach, whether a fracture is present or not. So whether it's a burst or a crush, a wedge or a bicongate fracture. On the last page, we have the results from the disc degeneration detection. So here, all the 
the discs in the sagittal T2 central slice are automatically segmented. And in addition, the crops are shown of each individual segment for better, uh, better visualization. On the right side in the table, you see for each segment the corresponding film grading from 1 to 5, as well as the disc area and the disc height. And at the very bottom, there are the results of the spinal canal stenosis quantitative assessment. It's not only a binary result as on the first page, but here it's more detailed. So on every segment level, the spinal canal is automatically segmented and based on um, how much uh, how big the area is and how much fluid is in the spinal canal, it's graded according to the schizos grading and then also pointed out here. So these are the six pathologies covered by the report. Now let me switch back to the presentation and talk a bit about the integration of scan dikes. So scan dikes can either run on premise in the hospital, so then it's directly uh, attached to the packs, or it can run in the cloud, whereas an additional uh, de-identification model is required before the data is sent to the cloud. Now let me sum up. The benefit of scan dikes is, uh, on one hand, the rapid se uh, second opinion about relevant conditions present in the lumbar spine MRI. The second is the quantitative information supports the radiologist's decision with relevant measurements on important anatomical structures. So that's usually something radiologists do not have time for, but it's very important to have the data present to um, have a data-driven decision and also be able to later on compare uh, how uh, the patient evolved over time, so how a pathology uh, developed over time. And lastly, the service is fully automated. Uh, it's an automated process that is seamlessly integrated into the radiology workflow. So the radiologists don't have to use another tool since everything is automated and the report is sent back once confirmed to the PACS. Thanks a lot for your attention and if you have questions don't hesitate to write or contact me.